Sag, welcome to your Sunday Shuffle. Like always, these are general collective readings, not one-to-one -one private, which is to say they may or may not resonate. So take what resonates, leave what does not. That's it. Let's get cracking. What's going on, please, for that Sagittarian energy? Show me Sag. Show me Sagittarius. What's going on, please, for Sag? Okay. Overarching energy. Eight of Swords we cannot see. Blindness, numbness, Page of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. I got you working through something. It's not the easiest of things, okay? It's not the easiest of things, all right? But you are indeed trying to work through something. And there is pain here. Sometimes we're blind to it, oblivious. We don't want to feel it. We don't want to have nothing to do with it. And then there's other times we can feel it. It's kind of raw. You know, nevertheless... Do your best to work through it, and you will see the other side. Let's take a look at that Eight of Swords. Show me that Eight of Swords, please. Show me that Eight of Swords, please. Something's got you mentally checked out, or you're trying to mentally check out, but it's not working, you know. It's not working. And the more we ignore something, procrastinate, the worse it gets. We know this. And there's always a consequence on it, even if it's at the energetic level, you know. Eight of Swords... Mental shutdown. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to feel it either. Let's see that. The chariot. Six of cups. The knight of cups. Oh, boy. We don't want somebody here. That's a lot of emotional energy. And it's, it's beautiful. On clarification, it's really beautiful. Let me make that clear to you. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. The chariot, six of cups, the knight of cups. That's It's very simple. It's it's sweet. It's it's loving. It's powerful too. It's a chariot. It's got the drive. It's got a driving force. We can't see how to connect with it at the emotional level, and yet, nevertheless, it's there underneath all the swords. What's naturally there, as a spring, as a font of emotion, is already there. And it's 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 resplendent, and it has no end. The emotional attachment behind it is gorgeous. You know. Strong soul bond, soulmate energy here. The vulnerability, romanticism, that is the Knight of Cups and the Chariot to drive it all forward, Eight of Swords. We can't see this, or we don't want to see it. The flow, the emotional flow you have with somebody, it's like I can't see it and I can't afford to, or I don't want to, and I don't know why. But the emotions are so sweet. And the nostalgia, that uniqueness, you know? That flow you have with somebody else. And it's like, I know you. We've shared many a cup. We've shared many memories. And you and I are uniquely connected. And we may not know how to articulate it. In fact, we probably don't even think about it. We just know that there's a flow between us that I can't find anywhere else. You're not supposed to. That's the whole point of a soulmate. They leave a particular imprint. And you can't find it anywhere else. You can't replace them. You know, you can't make new friends and hope you'll find someone just like them. It's not like that. And this one's very sweet and nostalgic. We've known them a long time. And there's an emotional force behind it that is no joke. And you're like, I can't see it. I can't see how to open up towards it. We're not feeling it. We're not allowing ourselves to feel what's already there. In excess, I might add. It's quite a bit of excess emotions. And you can't see how you can access it, or that you're supposed to, or that the want is there. The want is there, but the sword is a mental thing. If we tell ourselves not to see it, never mind feel it, we're not gonna. The question is, is why? Why won't you let it flow through you? Express it. Identify it. You know? Let's take a look. Show me that page of wands. Show me that page of wands. Show me that page of wands, please. Show me that page of wands. Show me that page of wands, please. Show me that page of wands, please. It's with you. I'm not saying you're obsessed with it day and night. I'm just saying it's with you. It's kind of important. Otherwise, they wouldn't be showing me that. Let's see that page of wands, the eight of cups, the queen of pentacles, four of swords, I see. Because practically speaking, you felt it was best not to emotionally attach to this. That's why. Uh, you told yourself, practically speaking, that it was best 
you walk away from this, you've rested on the subject, you made up your mind, that's why. So that self excuse me, self-imposed Eight of Swords, in which typically it is. I just don't really, really say it that's direct. Uh, so we did this on purpose. This was kind of a plan. Uh, you, But here's the thing. It was the plan that you really felt was best intended. You you felt it was a good intended plan. If I, I'm going to rest on it, Four Swords is active resting. You kind of consolidated yourself towards this particular subject, and the King, Queen of Pentacles will often have a great deal to say about what it is they can invest in. And you said it's best and or safest not to emotionally invest in this. Perhaps that emotionality was just so, so fluid, honey. It's so fluid. You really, and I mean, that's really fluid. Do you see? That's all water. It's all fluid. And it's all positive fluidity, too. That means there was no hiccups, no speed bumps, no robots. In other words, the ability to connect with this at the emotional level was extremely high. That means we would have had to have gone out of our way, such as you did, to not accept it. It's not an accusation or an insult, so don't take it as one. The Sag I'm looking at, you said you chose not to. I'm not seeing this as a bad job. I'm not seeing this as a bad relationship. I'm not seeing this as a bad person. How could it be? This is something we chose not to participate in on the emotional level. We, In fact, we consolidated ourselves to it. We consolidated ourselves to it. It's like, I'm not going to get emotionally invested. My reasons are my reasons. And you did have your reasons for a sword. You said, I thought about it. Let's take a look at that Eight of Pentacles, please. You know, when you have that kind of wellspring of emotions, it's just so easy. It's so nurturing. It's so, it's like I said, it's so fluid. It's so easy to fall in love with that kind of energy because it's just there. You don't have to force it. You don't have to get to know it. You don't even really have to date it. I'm serious. You didn't have to date that. <laughs> you didn't. There's no dating there. I don't even see hanging out. <laughs> it's just the connection was so easy that when you were with it, it felt like you were already intimately connected to it. Am I right? When you're dating someone, you get to know them, you, you get to understand early on if you have the ability in you to emotionally attach to it. That's what dating's for. This you didn't even have to date. When it was in your life, you just felt like it was naturally yours. Right there. Right? Am I right? You didn't need to date. You didn't have to date much, honey. You didn't have to see that person much to know that you were emotionally attached to them. Or that you weren't supposed to be, or you felt you weren't supposed to be. Kept yourself an emotional distance on purpose. You had a little talk with yourself about it. Let's see that Eight of Pentacles, please. Let's see that Eight of Pentacles. Let's see that Eight of Pentacles. Let's see that Eight of Pentacles. That is effortless feeling here. Really effortless. The way it should be. What most people would kill for. Not kill for, but die for. Some people would, absolutely. I would love something that natural and I didn't have to put any thought into it. And you're like, that's the exact opposite, Christina. That's the exact opposite. I don't want that. But you had your reasons. It was so strong. So strong. It confuses you to this day how strong it is. You're working through it. There's things you're learning now about the lovers after the fact. I see you actively learning about the lovers and the strength of it. You're working through it. You are. Uh, you are learning fast after you made the decision to emotionally detach from this or never to really get engaged with it from the beginning. But now, instead of mentally shutting it away, I see you being very busy and trying to understand it better. Why? Because it looks to me like you made up your mind. You're trying to understand it better now. After you kind of shunned it. Not shunned it, but you didn't participate in it actively. Like I said, your reasons are your reasons. But now I see you working through it. What does it mean? Eight of Pentacles, that's that's serious work. What does it mean? I want to understand this now, and why is it still called to me? Because it's so damn strong. It might have been a little bit more than a soulmate, huh? Is that what we're trying to figure out? Was it a little bit more? Was it a hyper soulmate? I guess you could call the lovers that. <laughs> a hyper soulmate, for sure. I'm trying to understand this because the strength of it looks with you, right? I saw it over here. Like I said, when something's that strong and you don't have to go out of your way to make it strong, you're going to raise some eyebrows. 
Why does this call to me so strongly? Let's keep going. Show me that Ten of Swords, please. Show me that Ten of Swords. 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 Show me that Ten of Swords, please. Seven of Wands, Ace of Cups, the Page of Swords. If you can believe it, part of you is turning back around despite whatever ending is here. Okay. The more you learn about this, I don't want this to freak you out. It's just, it's one of those things, honey. The more you learn about it, the more you realize you're not done with it. And you're right, you're not. And it's not an accusation. It's not an accusation. I'll see how this person threatened your heart in the form of new love. And that's probably how it presented itself. Who knows why? Maybe you weren't ready to receive this, this very strong connection that the Spirit made that clear. So did you. And you're still learning about it. And the more you learn about it, the more you turn back around and look at that opportunity that was the Ace of Cups and you still wonder, was it really for me? You think about it a great deal, you still observe your heart space in that way. It's like, why did I shun it? Why didn't I participate? It was always this strong, right? So the more we have to work against something that strong kind of tells us how much force it, it, it actually is. And there's a different reason, like I said, perhaps you just weren't prepared to accept this connection the way it presented itself, especially if you didn't know how strong it could be and how easily strong it was too. But also it could be some very basic logistical stuff I'm just not seeing here today. One or both of you could have been in something already that uh, commands your attention in your emotional space elsewhere. It could have been that simple. And in fact, if that was the case, that doesn't, I know it doesn't make it simple, but that would be the easiest explanation by far because that's active shutdown. Active, I'm not going to participate this at the emotional level because it's just too easy for me. I'm not even having to try. I don't even really have to date this person. I can just hang around them, right? And I feel a whole bunch of stuff without effort. Yeah. Yeah. We're still learning about that. What you'll do with that knowledge, I don't know. But every now and again you turn back around and look at your heart space and you wonder, okay, my not participating in this at the time made sense then. Would it be possible for one day? And that is a far off concept. It is. But it's when you open up towards a little more. That's why I said I don't want it to freak you out because uh, it's still with you. And part of you wants to know if it's still for you. Is it still for me? Will I ever be able to fully access it? Because I'd kind of like to. It's like low key. And uh, you're still guarding your heart. Let's make that clear. But a uh, part of you is growing into the idea that you don't really want to. You know, as one might expect. Nobody wants to push away energy like that. Nobody does. Nobody wants to be on the receiving end of being pushed away like that. Nobody wants to have to generate pushing someone else away. Nobody does. No, nope, not at this level. It, never, it doesn't feel good either side. To have pushed it away or to have yourself pushed away because y you know you're not in a position to accept it. If you were in a position to accept it, honey, I don't think you would have hesitated. I don't. I don't. Like I said, imprisonment to love. I could read this in a couple of different ways. And they might all a little bit apply to this. Harkening back to what I said, the simplest explanation is usually correct. One or both of you were already in something that's pre-existing. And we see it as being imprisoned to whatever that is. Um, so here's the love of two, but chained. In other words, it's um, I'm tied to this union. I don't know that there's necessarily love in it, but somebody might be tied to a union. Or I can see it as I feel chained to that person emotionally. 
how come I can't really let them go? That's, well, a wee bit more than a friend. Very strong. Like I said, we were spiritually and emotionally dating this person without trying. That's why I see you have a little talk with yourself. Which interpretation's up to you? Some of you feel chained to a pre-existing love. Others of you feel chained to this person, and why can't you let them go? And like I said, for some of you, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Yeah, like I said, somebody already has something going. It kind of came out like this. It's th This is the engagement ring, obviously. Classic indication of engagement, commitment, all that, the ring. I don't feel comfortable saying that. For some of you, 2025, there might be some activity um, about something that's pre-existing. Yes, uh, for some of you then, you feel tied to a pre-existing contract commitment, or perhaps they do, but somebody does. Like I said, the simplest explanation, Occam's razor, you know. All right. Okay. That's kind of negative. I don't know where that's coming from, but that's extremely negative. That's extremely negative. Um, I don't like that. It's I get it from a practical point of view. That could be somebody's concern, but I think that as a parent, I think this is this is a horrible point of view. Uh, but if you don't have kids, or if you're very again practically reminded, uh, particularly in regards to resources, I could see where this would be a concern. But somebody's concerned here that if you have a child, it's just going to take away from resources. And again, that's very negative, but I can't say it's not practical. It's different when, you, when you're when you a parent. <laughs> you, you provide. That's just what you do. You provide. You don't think twice about it. So if somebody here has the, the disposition of not having kids and somebody else does, they're going to see that as a drawback, especially if they've never had to deal with kids before. So this is the mice that nibble away at the resources, the food in the pantry. Somebody sees children as being a negative here, as requiring a great deal of resources, and that's another thing that keeps them at bay. Uh, so I can't say that that's not a possibility. Somebody here might have a kid as well, and it keeps them from moving forward in the true love or that they want. If you ask me, this is someone who has very finite <laughs> thinking about resources and low-key negative ideologies around children. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help that, and that's another that's that's another session for another day. Uh, if you have that kind of negative point of view of children, and um, can you provide for them? But can I provide for them? That's positive thinking. Somebody says children will take away from my resources, and um, kind of negative. Some of them have some very, very negative energy or points of view around children, and that's unfortunate. And that's usually something you grow up with, as opposed to... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. And then there's the courthouse, the officiousness, um, the sense of correctness and legal issues that are tied to somebody that I'm looking at. Okay? All right. A fiery climax approaches full moon and Aries. Let's see, full moon and Aries. Yeah, no, we've already had the full moon and Aries. No, no, no. The fiery climax. So there might be something here that moves it forward. Something. Something that generates activity. I don't know. Something that moves it forward. I do not know. Your hard work is paying off. Hard work is paying off, and that's just for the general sense of things. For some of you, this might relate to work. Hard work is paying off. Okay. The pearl, a hidden gem. You know, a hidden treasure. Pearl is a beautiful thing, but it takes time. A lot of time. There's a hidden gem in here. Pearl, know your worth, know your value. Absolutely. Teeth, somebody is afraid to change. It's like pulling teeth. Oh, somebody's got limited thinking, and that's where we get the fears about, oh, children and resources, and 
oh, legal issues, uh, you know what, I can't, no, no, this situation I can control, and so, it, which, again, control is a false concept, the more you try to control something, it just controls you back, in other words, it keeps you changed, i.e., double energy. But yeah, this idea of uh, change, I can't control change, I don't know if I can be part of change without controlling it, uh, it's like pulling teeth, it's, it's on the sideways. Change is possible, but we have to know it and see it in order to understand that. Okay. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay. Here we have the Medallion of Virgo. The Medallion of Cancer. The Medallion of Libra. The Diamond. Yeah, there's that commitment energy again. Pre-existing commitment. Okay, the Diamond. And also Earth Energy, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, and the letter T. Sadie, honey, I hope this helped you. I know it seems inconclusive, but for the Sadie I'm looking at, for some reason, this is impressing upon your energy. However, the Sadie I'm looking at, you are contemplating these things for a reason. It's still with you. And it seems like you are wanting to open back up towards it in time, readdress it in time, if you can believe it. And part of you doesn't, but it's there. You're not done working through this. Okay. There are bits and pieces here that suggest comprehensively why we did what we did. Okay. But also why we would still maybe like to open back up towards it in time. All right, like I said, I hope this helped. Take care. Be well.